Preston Smiles once said to me, Beck, not all money is good money. And that has always stayed with me, that I get to create a business that feels so good for me. I don't want to create a prison because I already worked in corporate and I knew what a slave I felt like to those four walls. What is up, you beautiful human? Hello and welcome back to the Raw, Real and Vulnerable podcast with me, your host, Beck Antonucci. I know I've been talking a lot about business and a lot about business coaching, a lot about my own income goals that I have been cracking and smashing through lately and I am feeling so expanded and lit up by this conversation. And the reason that I love it is because up until now, I didn't talk about it and I created such a successful business just through being the embodiment of my work and staying consistent with the teachings and distinctions that I know are true to my repertoire. And because of that, I have created an incredible community where I attract the most incredible women into my world who all become best friends, who attend retreats and facilitations and trainings and programs and connect with each other all over the world, who also become women that I love to go to dinner with, that send me gifts, that I love to send flowers to. I have just created the most beautiful business that enriches my soul and feels like an extension of my passions. Now, because of that, I've been in the coaching industry for a really long time and a lot of coaches have followed along with my journey and wondered why they're not quite at the same place that I'm at. I haven't run ahead in leaps and bounds, but I've also not stagnated. And so I've created sustainable success that's constantly growing. Now, a lot of coaches online, coaches and entrepreneurs will get into a very big comparison game. People talk about numbers on the internet. People seem to be running before they can walk on the internet. People seem to go from zero followers to a million followers overnight on the internet. People seem to think that one viral reel is going to be the thing that blows them up on the internet. And a lot of us can get really hard on ourselves for thinking that we're going too slow. I've received some messages from coaches who feel really disheartened by marketing tactics that attract clients in what can be perceived as misleading ways. And one of those marketing tactics is to slam money and numbers all over the internet. In this episode today, I deep dive into a question that a friend and follower sent to me about attraction marketing, specifically using money and how we can support ourselves as coaches to break free from building a business that now feels like a prison. If you've left the J-O-B, if you've left corporate to build yourself some kind of freedom lifestyle, and then you rebuild the corporate prison in your own company, then what was the point of leaving in the first place? In today's episode, I speak so clearly about the energy from which we create, the energy from which we market, and the energy from which we say yes to clients. If you are a coach or an upcoming entrepreneur who is really desiring to give your gifts and amplify your life, your lifestyle, your client base, and your finances, this episode is for you. If you love this episode, please screenshot it, share it to your story, tag me so I can connect with you and so that I can share it as well. If you love watching your podcast episodes rather than listening, we are now on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe, strap yourself in. This is one hell of an episode. Let's fucking go. So I've shared with you many times now that I am on my journey to creating my first $1 million income year in business. And I have been really hesitant to share income goals and achievements online for a really long time for many, many, many reasons. A part of that was because for such a long time, the work that I was doing with my clients was not supporting them to create bigger businesses, was not supporting them to create freedom lifestyles, was not supporting them to create their own impact driven businesses. So it really, for me personally, made no sense for me to be talking about money on the internet when that wasn't a part of my core offering. Now, over the past year, as I've shared with you, I'm such a big believer in following energy and following life's yeses. And God has gifted me, not through my own marketing, but through my own embodiment, a private client book of coaches and entrepreneurs. And I have a personal love for business, a personal love for money and a personal love for marketing. I always have. So I'm very, very good at it. Plus I'm an incredible coach. It's kind of like the one thing that was handwritten on my soul to do was coaching, writing, marketing, podcasting. It's like God was just like, here you go, girlfriend. (laughs) These are the things that you're good at. I'm not really that good at many other things, but those four things I'm really good at. And I love doing it as a part of my personal passion. 
And so over the past year, following those yeses, I've built this beautiful one-on-one client base of coaches and entrepreneurs who are achieving and creating phenomenal results. Now, a beautiful thing about my own attraction marketing that I have been doing is using my embodiment as the thing that is attracting the client. I don't use misleading marketing and I don't use misleading marketing tactics to gain clients that wouldn't be aligned with the ethos and the values of my business. Now, when you're building a business, what I feel is incredibly important is that you're connected to the nervous system of your business and why you created that business in the first place. Because if we're not clear on the values of our business, the nervous system of our business, the integrity of our business, the why of our business, for some of us, we leave the nine to five because we think that we want freedom. But then we recreate that feeling of essentially slavery in our own company because we're doing the things that we did in corporate that we didn't want to do. Just now we're doing it for ourselves and for our misaligned clients. And so if you're here right now, I'm going to assume that if you're here and you're building a business, you're here and you're eventually wanting to build a business, you're here and you want to break free from the J-O-B, I'm assuming that a part of that is because The ethos, the values, the integrity that the past career paths that you've walked didn't actually align with the truth of who you are. So why would you recreate that within your own company? It doesn't feel like something that's going to light you up. Now, a woman who is lit up is expansive. A woman who is expansive is magnetic. A woman who has a full cup has so much to give from the overflow. A woman who is stressed out, drained and living in scarcity doesn't have a lot to offer. So for those that are following along right now with this current message, if you feel like you already have a business and is getting some amount of result and you're currently living in scarcity and you're currently living in self-sacrifice and you're creating, I'm doing air quotes right now, results, imagine the kind of results that you will create when you're in your abundance, when you're in your fulfillment, when you're in your joy, when you're in your full cup, when your cup is so full it's overflowing. If you think that you're creating good results now, imagine the kind of results you'll create then. And so a woman that I've known online for a really long time, we've been in a few masterminds together and a part of a similar community, she wrote me a message that I just had to read to you. And it says, hi Beck, I've been following your journey for years now and I really recognize the expansion that you are stepping into, the expansion that I am stepping into. Remember when I said embodiment gets to be a part of your marketing strategy? Just notice that I haven't been talking to coaches and entrepreneurs online and yet through my embodiment, that's what I attracted. That's really interesting. I really recognize the expansion that you are stepping into. I've been following your posts about coaches who use money as attraction marketing to get clients. I've been talking about this a lot on my Instagram story. I have fallen victim to this and I started posting reels similar to the ones that you speak about. I'm not sure if you have seen the coaches online that use money and numbers as attraction marketing because it does. It triggers a part of our brain. Some people say it's pain point marketing, but then if you're an entrepreneur, it's also desire point marketing because all entrepreneurs start a business because they want to make money. And let's take the shame away from wanting to make money. You're in business because you want to make money. Now, if you're a great person, I'm like a big fuck yes to you making as much money as you want because great people making great money creates a better world. Bad people, any more money? They say that money is an amplifier. Money will amplify the human that you are. So if you're a great person with money, you're going to be a better person with money. If you're a dickhead with money, you're going to be an even bigger dickhead. So let's be a big yes to people with heart-led, impact-driven businesses, let's be a big yes to all of those women being in their abundance so their cup is so full so they can give from the overflow. I am such a big yes to that. I have fallen victim to this and started posting reels similar to the ones that you speak about. What I find funny about these reels, have you ever noticed when some of the screenshots are just the same screenshots all the time? Like there's a particular woman that speaks about her million dollar months in business and she has this $67,000, I got paid $67,000 today, but it's the same screenshot. And it's like every month she posts all these screenshots. I'm like, that's the same $67,000 that I saw you posting like two years ago, (laughs) put up new screenshots. But if she gets new followers and they see that number, they just see the 67. It has actually worked for me though. And I have attracted some, she puts air quotes here. I have attracted some clients. This has been my main form of income in what otherwise has been a dismal coaching career. 
And I know that we have been in masterminds for about four years. So I would say that this woman's had a coaching career for at least four years. I'm not sure if longer. And the thing about length, especially if you're a coach following along right now, remember, if you were a doctor, you go to school for 10 years. Something that Instagram rips from us is this knowing that we're meant to be committed to the vision for the long game. We end up creating these businesses and it's a very unregulated industry and Instagram, you can market anything and you can say anything and you can attract clients just through really smart marketing tactics. And then we feel like we're in this huge state of comparison because we see what feels like all of these humans running really successful businesses online. But I remember Gary Vee once saying, the people that kind of fast track their way to success are the 1% and everyone else takes 10 years to have their big income year. And so I really just want to put this in that if you're at the four year mark of your coaching business, you're still only at the four year mark of your coaching business. Like, yes, you should be creating results and there should be some kind of expansion and growth, but it doesn't need to be zero to 200,000, zero to 500,000, zero to 1 million. It's just growth and expansion. And you're on God's timeline, not your personalities. And you're definitely not on Instagrams. So I just want to put that in the space that Instagram can rob us from having our long vision goggles on, but long vision goggles are actually going to be the thing that supports you to get to the goal faster. Because when you're not trying to, just like that saying, the faster you run to the horizon, the further away it goes. And when you realize that there is no horizon to get to, and you're on your journey, and you're realizing that every single day you're on that journey, and you're actually there, that's when the there, the right now becomes more fulfilling. And the result becomes less of the reason that you're in business. And so right now, as I read this woman's question and comment, something that you may like to start to reflect on is, why are you in business in the first place? Why did you choose to create an impact-driven business in the first place? Why did you choose coaching? All of the entrepreneurs that come to me, no matter what they're creating, makeup, hair, sister circles, sound healing, coaches, consultants, whatever it is that they're offering the world, they say, I just want to help people. I just feel good when I'm supporting other people to feel good. So that's something that you get to remember because if you're doing something that doesn't make you feel good, but you're in business because you like to make people feel good, but the way that you run your business doesn't make you feel good, then how are you going to make other people feel good when you don't feel good? It doesn't really make any sense. Remember the energetics of what you infuse into the business, the energetics of your choice is gonna create the outcome. If you're in scarcity, if you're in survival, if you're being self-sacrificial and you're infusing that energy into your business, no wonder you're getting the results that you're getting, whether that's income and or client results. So this has been my main form of income in what otherwise has been a dismal coaching career. So remember, there's a part of the brain that likes to evidence stack. So if up until now you've not created income in your coaching career through any other marketing tactic other than talking about money, there's gonna be a part of your brain that says, the only way for me to make money online is for me to talk about making money online. So now we have to evidence stack something else and have your body register that as true. Otherwise, there's gonna be an alarm bell that kicks off that says the only way for me to make money is to talk about making money. I have heard you speak about your business many times and how you speak about it is something that I would love to experience within my own business. The problem is I feel like I am imprisoned to my biz and I don't know how to change. Speaking about money got me sales, but from clients I mostly detest. That's interesting. I feel like their employee, their copywriter, or their consultant, rather than their coach. I'm losing my spark, my creativity, and my confidence, and I really want to pivot before I tap out entirely. What would you recommend that I do? The problem is I feel like I am imprisoned to my biz. So I really want to circle that back around to right now, if this woman has evidence stacked and said, okay, I've signed up to that marketing coach and that marketing coach has supported me to use money as a form of attraction marketing to gain clients. Now, because I actually coach quite a few business coaches who support women to go from zero to 300,000 in their online impact driven businesses. Now, some of those coaches will say to me, when I talk about money, I actually attract more clients but the kind of client that I attract doesn't feel in alignment with my values. They feel desperate, they feel scarce, they feel grabby. And so yes, using money as a way to sell does, air quotes, work. Does it work in a way that works for you? For this woman, when she says, 
Speaking about money online got me sales, but from clients I mostly detest. Years ago, I had this mentor, his name is Zion Kim, and I signed a client that in that moment as I was doing it, I felt this no show up in my body, but I was new to coaching. This was in my first 12 months of business. So at that time, I was a yes to everyone. I was definitely a yes to money. Any client is a good client. I'll go out on any sales call with any person. I don't need to pre-qualify. I don't need to check if they're all good for it. I just want to practice sales practice selling, practice building my business. I've done hundreds of sales calls. I have coached so many people. I have put rep after rep after rep into building my repertoire so that I could build the confidence that I have now. This confidence that I have four and a half years in was built four and a half years ago through failure after failure after failure after failure after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. But I was always willing to fail forward because I had my long vision goggles on and I knew where I was headed to. And so I had this particular moment with a client who was actually an old friend from high school. And I'd worked with her once before, but I just, I have a very strong intuition. I just had a feeling with this woman that it wouldn't be a great coaching relationship. And she came to me and she said, I've been saving up and I want to work with you. And so I was a yes to money. I'd been in scarcity for a really long time. And I felt this, oh, no, Rebecca, I don't think this client is a good client. And I signed her. On that very same day, because I'm in this marketing program, in this business coaching program, Zion Kim comments on everything that we put in the chat. I put up, I've signed this client. I took her money. I don't feel good about it. And he said, why did you sign her? My truth was because... At the moment, I'm a yes to everyone, even if I'm a no. That was actually my truth. And this client backfired and it was not a nice experience in all of my coaching career in just over four and a half years now. I've maybe had three bad apples. I attract the most incredible clients who get the most incredible results, who talk about my work, who share about it online. I have the most beautiful community. They all become friends. It's been a part of the ethos that I infuse, the energy that I infuse into my business. I recognize that my mentor, Preston Smiles, created a community where so many of us became friends, best friends and colleagues. So many of my friends have come out of his space that I was like, oh, even if I never got anything out of Preston's world, I got friendship. I got belonging. That's what I got to receive from him. I realized how invaluable that experience was for me and I decided I want to infuse that energy into my business, belonging, community, friendship. And so now I see my clients all over the world connecting, taking photos together, going to retreats together, going to festivals together, traveling to see one another. It's so enriching for me. They tag me and everything. It's just beautiful. I've had three bad apples in four and a half years and it was because Zion Kim said this to me. He goes, Beck, signing a client that you know that you're a no to, that you override and say yes to because you want the money. That is like grabbing a grenade, pulling the detonator, throwing it into your future and just waiting for it to go off. And that analogy has never left me since. That as soon as boom, there is a no that shows in my business, if I override that because I'm like, oh, but I want the money. I'd love to sign this client right now. It's grenade, trigger, throw, wait for it to blow up. And it does every single time. And when it did, I just sat back and I thought to myself, what an acknowledgement of how strong my intuition is. And sometimes one of my other mentors, Preston Smiles once said to me, Beck, not all money is good money. And that has always stayed with me, that I get to create a business that feels so good for me. I, have, I don't want to create a prison because I already worked in corporate. I already worked in corporate and I knew what a slave I felt like to those four walls. So for me, I have a practice where I get into relationship with the nervous system of my business. My nervous system mentor, Carrie Azuma, provided me with this tool. As I was stepping into my expansion and employing more people, I was noticing all the places where my leadership was lacking all the places where I had unspoken agreements, all the places where boundaries hadn't been communicated, all the places where I was feeling stressed because I hadn't had the conversations that needed to be had to make sure that both people, myself and my small team, felt really good. And so through all of these stresses and all of these pains and all of these irritations and all of these frustrations and all of these irks and all of this invested money that felt like if it had been better managed or 
if my time had been smartly managed or if boundaries with my staff had been better communicated, it would have saved time and it would have saved money. I've gone through all of this with Carrie for her to share with me, why don't you create some kind of process around really understanding the nervous system of your business so that you can be in relationship with your business. So you know for your business what feels good. You know for your business what doesn't feel good. You know what feels good for your sales. You know what feels good for your clients. You know what feels good for the community that you're building. And it's almost for me like a journaling practice, but being in communication with the energy of the business where I can talk to her and I get a response. If I was this woman, maybe you've named your business, maybe you haven't, but I would get out my journal and I would write something like, I feel really imprisoned by my business right now. And at the moment, I'm feeling like the only way to make money is to talk about making money. But the problem with talking about making money is I'm attracting clients from my energetic of desk. Remember, the energy that we infuse creates the outcome. So she's like, the only way for me to make money is to talk about money. So from I want to make money. So from scarcity, I'm now going to talk about money. What would be a better energetic to talk about it from? Well, she said that she wants to speak from spark, creativity and confidence. So what from your spark, your creativity and your confidence do you want to speak about? So from my scarcity, I'm talking about money to attract money, but I'm attracting their desperation and scarcity. And now I'm in this coaching relationship with a client that I detest. And now I feel like their employee rather than their coach. And this isn't feeling good for me. I want creativity and spark and confidence. And so I would be journaling with my business about what would actually bring me back my spark? What would actually bring me back my confidence? What would actually bring me back my creativity? And so if you're this woman or anyone resonating right now, full circling to the original question that I asked, why did you get into business in the first place? And I'm assuming for a lot of you, you did not say, oh, it's to screenshot my clients' monthly incomes and to share it on the internet. Sometimes I will share income goals of my clients online, sometimes. Not always, and I'm going to tell you why. I know that money is a form of attraction marketing. When I speak about money, you listen. Just like when I speak about herpes, people listen. And I also know that as a part of my values and a part of my teachings and a part of my ethos and a part of my integrity and a part of my invaluable skill set, there is so much more to what I offer other than just supporting a client to expand their finances. I can support you to do that, absolutely, but it is not my only work. And so if you're feeling imprisoned by your current marketing tactic that you have been using and you're desiring to expand into your creativity and your spark, what got you into business in the first place? What are your other pillars distinctions that you teach about beyond making more money. I'm going to give you some hints. You will notice that my message has changed a lot over the past almost five years and yet it hasn't. So yes, I originally built, this was a question from a previous uh, herpes Q&A. Do you think your coaching business would be successful if you didn't have herpes? Absolutely yes. Maybe it would have taken a little bit more time to create a really loud impact fast. And what the conversation around herpes did was created a lot of no like and trust from the get-go. Now I had been planting seeds and building an online presence. I have a small online community, but a very nurtured community. And I had been in fitness for a really long time. I've always loved marketing. So I had always been posting on Facebook and Instagram. And I had always shared a message around health, around female empowerment, around confidence. So when I shifted into life coaching, no one looked at me and was like, what the F is that woman doing? People would have looked at me and been like, that makes sense. It makes sense that she is doing this now. Ever since she was 20, she's been talking about health and fitness and being a confident and empowered woman. This is just another iteration of a very similar expression, but it's delivered in a different vehicle. It's delivered in life coaching and business coaching and trauma-informed coaching rather than personal training, rather than an online Ecolux activewear. I was a marketing and operations manager for one of the biggest healthy franchise cafes in Western Australia. Like I have always had the same empowered message. I've always been planting seeds. I've always been creating no like and trust. 
what herpes did is because I do know that I have a very triggering personality. Even if you don't like me, you most likely trust me. You trust me because of my consistency. You trust me because I've been posting online since I was 20. You trust me because you know how much I value health. You trust me because you know I'll be a voice for people who haven't found theirs. Even if you're triggered by me, you're like, don't like her, but yeah, I trust her. She like She's consistent and she'll say things that other people won't. And so having someone know, like, and trust you is invaluable. Do I think my coaching business would have been as successful if I didn't have herpes? Yes, it just may have taken longer to have that instant bang on the internet, I'm a life coach now impact. But that's how herpes supported me because just like money, it was a big attraction form of marketing, but I didn't do it intentionally to be attraction marketing. Remember the energetics create the outcome. I did it to free myself. That was the purpose of my share. The energy of my share was to, for me to free myself, to create energetic expansion, to remove the shame. So I had space for more life. Once I removed the shame, I had space for a business to land. And so now when you're curious about what your pillars are, what your distinctions are beyond money, you get to get clear about why you got into business in the first place. So yes, Rebecca Antonucci started her business talking about shame and talking about the herpes virus. But if you broke that down into different teachings, I spoke about vulnerability. I spoke about forgiveness. I spoke about cord cutting, which is attached to forgiveness, healing from heartbreak, cutting the cord of resentment towards your ex-boyfriend that you blame for the experience that you're living. I spoke about standards. I spoke about self-expression. I spoke about courage and feeling worthy and cultivating the muscle of courage so you can use your voice and speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself and set empowering standards. Know your wants, needs, desires and boundaries. Four and a half years later, whilst my message is becoming less and less and less about the herpes virus, I still talk about vulnerability. I still talk about forgiveness. I still talk about cord cutting. I still talk about courage. I still talk about the woman owning and knowing her wants, needs, desires, boundaries, standards. I still talk about the woman cultivating the muscle of courage so that she can feel worthy from within to actually use her voice, to ask for what she wants, to create the business that she desires, to leave the career that she hates, to break up with the guy that she knows that she needs to leave, to ask for her sexual wants, needs, desires to be met, to say no when she really means no, to say yes when she really means yes, to raise her rates, to show up online, to break free from the fear of being seen and actually expose herself, whether it's the herpes virus and its disclosure or it's starting a podcast or launching a business, it's still the very, very same pillars, just showing up in a different vehicle for the woman. And so, yes, once you do all of that, if you have an online business or you have an in-person business, guess what? You're going to make more money. If you remove the shame, you feel worthy, you raise your rates, you can deliver a better service, you have an invaluable skill set, you have an unbelievable product, you have no fear of marketing, you have no fear of asking to be paid, and you let yourself be seen, there's no way not to make more money. No way! Especially if you've got your long vision goggles on and you're committed to the long vision. But I speak about all of that. Why? Because it lights me up. I love talking about sex on the internet. It lights me up. I love writing sex stories. It lights me up. I can't wait to release my own erotic novel based on truths that I've lived through one day. It lights me up. But if I forgot about all of those pillars and only spoke about money, I would get bored. I'd want to slam my head against this table right here, right now. I know one of my mentors said to me, just slam all over the internet, Beck, that you support women to go from what the fuck am I doing to $30,000 income months. And I was like, I could do that. And I could write a post about it. I could maybe write three posts about it. After three days, I will literally want to put a gun to my head. I will be so bored because that's not what the nervous system of my business is asking me for. I'm not here to be robotic Rebecca Antonucci and teach you how to go from zero to $30,000 income months. How boring. If I did that, I would be writing the exact same question that this woman wrote to me to my business coach. I feel imprisoned to my business and I don't know how to change. 
Get into relationship with your business. Get into relationship with the nervous system of your business. Connect with the why of your business. Why did you start it in the first place? You didn't leave corporate to create another prison, but for yourself. You may as well have just stayed in the JOB that you did. At least you're getting paid every single month. Now you're feeling trapped and now you're signing clients from desperation and scarcity and detesting them. Babe, it is time for change. Get curious about your why. Get curious about what you teach beyond making money. A part of me was like, just do it for a month where you just slam income, client results, constantly, constantly, constantly on the internet. And a part of me was just like, don't do it. I've done it before in masterminds. When I come in and we always celebrate wins. We believe that God doesn't speak English, God speaks vibration. And God doesn't know the difference between ant and elephant. So if I celebrate this amazing podcast right now, or I celebrate my $100,000 month in business, God doesn't say, oh, the $100,000 a month is better than the podcast she's doing right now or is better than the great time that she spent in Bali or is better than the sunset that she just watched or is better than the dog that she just played with on the street. As long as Rebecca is in celebration, God feels that vibration and amplifies that energy. God isn't like $100,000 a month is the best podcast was great, but let me just check how many downloads it got because then I can decide if it was good or not. Fed the street dog. Yeah, that's nice, but that's not a celebration. God doesn't do that. God doesn't know the difference between ant and elephant. God doesn't care about the difference. It's all the same. But our energy that we bring to it, that's what creates the change. So when I go into this mastermind and I celebrate my wins, oh my God, just signed a $30,000 coaching client, just signed a $35,000 coaching client. I'm expanding, I'm expanding. Oh my God, I said my million dollar year is coming. Oh my God, it's coming faster than what I thought, but I knew that it was coming and a year ago, I was like, why isn't it here yet? So of course it's here right here right now. As soon as I do that, I notice so many people reach out to me privately and they're like, I need to work with you. I need to sign up with you. How do I work with you? How do I work with you before you raise your rates again? And I will reflect back to all of them. Are you choosing to work with me because you're ready or are you choosing to work with me because you heard the numbers that I was saying and they spoke to a deep pain that exists within you and now from desperation and scarcity, you're quickly attempting to grab at me because you wanting to work with me from grabby, desperate energy isn't going to create a great and thriving coaching relationship. So I want you to go back, sit with your choice pause, work with the power of the pause and ask yourself, from what energy am I choosing? So now when you invest in a mentor, you get to sit with and ask, from what energy am I choosing? When you talk about money on the internet, you get to sit and ask, from what energy am I choosing? If I'm choosing from regulation, if I'm choosing from choice, if I'm choosing from response rather than reaction, if I'm choosing from abundance, if I'm choosing because I know it's time, even though there's a bit of fear, I know it's time, but I'm ready to go, that's different than, oh my God, I'm not getting results, I feel desperate, I hate my business, someone that's talking about making money on the internet, please save me. That is not gonna create a great client and coach relationship. That's not gonna create a thriving business for you. And so for this woman and any person listening, you get to understand the energy from which you are doing everything that you are gifting the world. For the past few weeks since I've known that I'm on YouTube, I've gone through this whole judgment of I should be better on the internet because now I'm on YouTube and these videos are going to be up forever and I don't know what I look like on every angle and I want my videos to be as good as Alex Hormozzi and Chris Williamson and I just went through this whole thing around judgment and judgment and judgment and judgment and I caught myself in it and I decided, oh my God, my podcasts need to be better than what they are and sometimes I get really crazy and I go off on a tangent and I don't really know if I land the plane. Am I giving enough value to my audience? Is everyone loving what I'm doing? Should it be better? Should we be getting more downloads and more views? Should I be bigger? Oh my God, I'm just on YouTube now and some of those videos have like 50 views on them and I've been used to having great numbers on Instagram and all of that went off in my brain. And then I had to remind myself, I will create to the extent that my capacity can hold. And as I continue to expand my capacity, I'll be able to create more. But also what's true is despite all of those judgments, my business is still growing. So no matter what I'm doing and whether my ego says it's good or not, my business is growing, my clients are expanding and I'm living a happier, more joyful and fulfilled life. So no matter what the metric says, all the life metrics are saying everything's working. But 
For me, as I caught all of those judgments and came back around and decided, I went through this whole thing this past week where I was like, my podcast isn't good enough. I've gone on tangents. I haven't prepared enough. Then I overprepared and then I fucked the podcast and I was getting really upset with myself. And then I had to say, from what energy are you creating these podcasts? And I was like, well, from the desire to give, the knowing that I deserve to communicate my voice, I know that I have medicine for people. I know that the medicine that I have will land on the ears of the women who need to hear it. And as my capacity grows, so will my message, so will my communication style, so will how I show up in podcasting. And as that happens, there will be more expansion, but it will happen on God's timeline and not mine. And so I reminded myself, Rebecca, it doesn't actually matter the numbers and the metric. It matters the energy that you're channeling into your work. So as I stepped into the podcast studio today, there was a part of me that had a little bit of fear around what I was communicating and how I would communicate it because now I put this pressure on myself that I want it to be really, really good. And I said to myself, take the pressure off and come back to the energy from which you are delivering the podcast. That's what you get to connect to. So to full circle this around to the woman who wrote me this note, You get to detach from the judgment. I know we're in similar masterminds and coaching groups and I hear the numbers that people are saying. You get to detach from the comparison. You get to detach from, well, we started at a similar time and Beck Anthony, she's now doing this in her business. And I started at the same time as her and she's doing this. And then that person's doing this. You get to, that's all external. My life is not yours. We're walking two very different paths. This is your journey, your unique journey, your unique medicine your heart, your soul, your impact-driven business, your bank balance, your family, your community that you're creating? Do you want to create a community that you detest? How would you feel, I want to leave this with you, how would you feel if you're working with a mentor who said yes to you because she wanted your money but detested you? How would you feel about that as a client? I really want you to connect to that because you infusing your integrity and your values and your standards into your business and you knowing so clearly what you're passionate about, what lights you up, what you love to teach, what you love to give and you infusing that into your business, okay, maybe it might take longer, longer to get where you want to go, longer than what your personality wants to take to get there wherever there is and maybe there's some kind of income goal for yourself. But I promise you, if you build a rock solid foundation, the bricks that you start laying on that foundation The house that you build, how strong it will be, no matter what wind hits it, it will not fall. So commit to the foundation, commit to the pillars, commit to the why, commit to your integrity, commit to finding another thing to speak about online other than money. Still talk about money. Keep doing it. If you're creating money results, do it. Get clear about the energy and get curious about what else it is that you teach that will create amazing results for the clients that you actually desire to attract. Now, my final cherry on top for you, get really curious about who your muse is. Imagine that your muse is a woman, a woman that you would just love to open your laptop to every single day. Whatever your communication channels are to your client, a woman that you would love to serve, that you would love to pour into, that you would love to invite on your retreats and run events for and have facilitation trainings with, a woman that you would love to... I've had clients come to Bali and we all go to dinner and we have the best time. Who is that woman? Describe her. Define her. What are the pains that she is going through? What is she afraid of? What medicine do you have for her? What are her desires? What do you know you can help her with? What will be her transformation after she works with you for three, six, nine, 12 months? What is that? Who is that? Name her. Picture her in your mind. And then when you create content, picture her. Not everyone, not Beck Antonucci, not a sea of clients, not the girls who bullied you in high school. Picture your muse and talk to her so that when your muse is scrolling Instagram in her pain, in her shame, in her hurt, in her anguish, that she scrolls past you and she says, oh my God, you're literally reading my diary right now. You're like in my head. How do you know that I'm feeling this? And be the embodiment of the results that she aches for and have a proven method that works not just for you, not just for one person. It's a different thing. If you can create results for yourself, that's awesome. But if you can create result after result after result after result for hundreds of clients, it's a whole other different thing. And that's what's going to make you an incredibly successful coach. So speak to your muse, be the embodiment of the results that she aches for and let her know through the way that you communicate to her online 
that you have the solution to what she is navigating. If you love this episode, please screenshot it, share it to your story, tag me so that I can connect with you and so that I can share it as well. Don't forget, if you love watching your episodes rather than listening to them, we are now on YouTube, so hit subscribe and watch along. I cannot wait to be back in your ears next week. I hope that you have the most beautiful, brilliant day. Let's fucking go.